Hey everybody, welcome to this video. This is just a simply a review of all of the murmur information that I feel like is important for Step 2 CK and the information that I think that I'm just going to keep in my head for test day and then kind of regurgitate out. Um, so for me, I'm never one of those people who tries to conceptualize or understand like heart sounds because I've tried to do that in the past, but I've just never come up with a way to memorize or not memorize it, but conceptualize it in such a way that I can retain it for long term or I can explain it to myself quickly on a test. So these are things that I honestly just memorize. Um, and so we'll go through the different maneuvers and then we'll go through the different um, grades of heart murmurs. And then we can go throughout the end what type of sounds are associated with which types of murmurs. So to start off with, there's Valsalva maneuver. So Valsalva maneuver is the maneuver that where you're like bearing down. And essentially with this, there's going to be decreased venous return. So dur that's during strain and then increased during relaxation. But just remember decreased venous return. And then the murmurs that get louder are going to be hokum and MVP. So hokum and MVP. And then murmurs that get softer are all the other ones. And then there's also standing. So with standing, remember there's decreased venous return as well. So it's going to be the same thing as Valsalva maneuver. So associate Valsalva with standing to help you remember that these two go together. And so murmurs that get louder with standing are gonna be hokum again and MVP, and then all the other murmurs get softer. So squatting is going to be a little bit different. There's gonna be increased venous return, increased afterload. There's also increased regurgitant fracture fraction, which is gonna be important in keeping in mind which murmurs get louder and which ones get softer. So the murmurs that get louder are gonna be aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, and VSD. The ones that get softer are gonna be hokum and MVP. So remember regurgitant fraction increases, so that's why you have these increased murmurs of mitral regurgitation and aortic regurgitation. Hand grip is the final maneuver. Um, so this is going to be associated with increased afterload. It's going to be associated with increased BP and increased um, regurgitant fraction. So again, the murmurs that get louder here are going to be aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, and uh, or sorry, ventricular septal defect. The ones that get softer are going to be hokum and then aortic stenosis, which is a little bit different. Um, for grades, there's grade one, and this was this comes from up to date. Um, so. Grade one is going to be the faintest sound that can be detected, often detected by cardiologists, but not regular physicians. Um, grade two and three are probably the most common ones that you'll see documented. Grade two is a soft murmur that is readily detectable. And grade three is louder than grade two, but it's not associated with a palpable thrill. Grade four is associated with a palpable thrill. And then grade five is a very loud murmur, audible with the stethoscope slightly placed on the chest. And then grade six is extremely audible with uh, extremely loud mur murmur audible with the stethoscope off the chest. So stethoscope can be off the chest and you can still hear the murmur. Last thing that I want to go over are these different types of, oops, the last thing I want to go over are these different types of murmurs. So um, I'll just type this out because I think that's going to be easier. Give me one second. Okay, so I just listed out all of the murmurs and then all of the characteristics that you should know about the murmurs. So it's like very um, straightforward for what you need to know and what you don't need to know. So the first one is going to be aortic stenosis. So I'm going to write a little bit here about aortic stenosis. So aortic stenosis. We know that this is going to be a mid-systolic murmur. And then it's going to be heard best at the right sternal border, at the second intercostal space. It's a crescendo, decrescendo murmur. So crescendo, decrescendo murmur. And that's all you have to know. Aortic stenosis, and it also radiates to the carotid. Sorry. Next one is going to be pulmonary stenosis. So pulmonary stenosis is essentially the same thing as aortic stenosis, except the 
there is a, a difference in the location where it's heard. So I'm not going to go into that. So just remember that for pulmonic stenosis, it's heard best at the lower or left sternal border at the third and second intercostal spaces. Uh, mitral regurgitation. So mitral regurg. This one is going to be a systolic murmur. So it's going to be heard in systole. It's heard at the apex of the heart. And then it's a hollow systolic murmur and it's continuous. So hollow systolic continuous murmur. Tricuspid regurgitation will be the same thing except it's heard at the fourth intercostal space at the left sternal border. Mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis is a diastolic murmur. So it's heard at the apex. Diastolic. And it's associated with the rumble. And then tricuspid stenosis, the same thing as mitral stenosis, except it's associated with the lower left sternal border. BSD is next. So BSD, high yield to note. Um, it's a hollow systolic continuous murmur at the left sternal border. Hollow systolic continuous at left uh, sternal border. Order. And then the next ones are going to be the aortic regurgitation murmurs and then pulmonic regurg. So aortic regurg occurs in diastole. It's early a diastolic murmur and then it's heard at the third intercostal space with the left sternal border. And remember this is a decrescendo murmur. So decrescendo and it's continuous. And then pulmonic stenosis, or sorry, pulmonic regurg. Same thing as aortic regurg, except the location. Actually, the location is actually the same. So I don't know how you differentiate between the two, but usually you're not going to get tested on pulmonic regurg. Um, and that's it. I think that the other things, though, hold on one second. And just a few more points that I didn't bring up before. Um, so mitral regurgitation is going to be associated with the radiation to the axilla. Uh, mitral stenosis is going to be associated with an opening snap. And then a hokum is a high-pitched crescendo, decrescendo, mid-systolic murmur heard best at the left lower sternal border. So imagine that this is your all physicians take money mnemonic. So then it's going to be at the left lower sternal border. And then MVP, I'm associating it with the... Um, I'm guessing it's going to be heard at the apex, where the M is. And then this is associated with the late systolic murmur that's preceded by a mid-systolic click. And that's all that there is for murmurs that I think is important. So I think if you watch this video a couple times through, you should be set for murmurs. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.